around. Two weeks ago, I started a series, and I know I'm going to end it today, whether I like it or not, because next week is um, members' appreciation show. I need to come up with another message, you know. Um, and um, so I've been talking about seeking God through prayer. I started by saying, and, I, and I've said this more, maybe more than three times now or five times now, I don't know, that prayer is not a duty. Prayer is not a religious art, but prayer is a fellowship. Now, the reason why people struggle with prayer is because they see prayer as a duty. They see prayer as a duty to perform. But prayer is not a duty. Prayer is a relationship to be pursued. Amen. Amen. When we pray, we are seeking relationship with our Father. And I said this in the first service, and I've said this several times, that prayer is like the way I explain prayer or the way I see prayer as a gift. It's like a father giving out a cell phone to his son or his daughter and say, you know what, you're going to school now. Uh, you're going to be away from me, but I need you to call me anytime. I need to reach you. I need to, you know, if you have any question, if you have anything you want, just use this phone, call me. So prayer is a gift. So God gave us prayer so that we can communicate with him. God gave us the, the tool of prayer so that we can fellowship with him. Every time we pray, we are fellowshipping with God. That is the purpose of prayer. Prayer is not for what we've turned prayer to be as receiving. Prayer is more than asking or, or receiving. Prayer is more, is forced fellowship. God wants to fellowship with us. God wants us to speak to him. Like you fathers and mothers, like you will want your kids to call you. You will want your kids to, when your kids call you, you are just on top of the world. That's how God feels when we call him. That's how God feels when we kneel or stand or do any, take any posture to call on him. That's how he feels. God wants to hear from us. We are his offsprings. We are created in his image. God wants relationship. The Bible says, and the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, 26, and God says, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. So God wanted relationship with us, and that's why he created us. And he gave us the tool of prayer so that we, with prayer we can communicate and we can reach out to him. Now, a life that does not pray, when you don't pray, when you are not prayerful, when prayer is not part of your, your routine, you are denying God from expressing himself in your life. Because the only way God can express himself in your life is through prayer. The only way you can get close to God and get to know the heart of God is through prayer. And this is one key thing that the church, I mean, there was a statistic that was done that the average Christian prays about less than two minutes a day. You know what Satan will want? Satan will want us to do everything by our power and not pray. But God wants us to depend on him. God wants us to rely on him in everything. And that's why God gives us the tool of prayer. The first service I talked about we took our reading from uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse um, 7 to 11. I'm going to start from there. I'm not going to try and um, run down everything because I need to finish this today. Amen. So in Matthew chapter 7, verse number 7, Matthew 7, 7 to 11, we begin to see what Jesus told us about prayer. And Jesus begins to explain what prayer is. He says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be open. I want to admonish those of you that are not in the first service, please get the tape. I'm not trying to recap the first service. I'm just jumping into a new thing, you know. So uh, please get the tape. It will help you understand better and deeper. Amen. So Jesus says, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone that asks, receive, everyone that seek, finds, everyone that, every door, and the door will be open to those who knock. So what is Jesus saying here? He saying, you know what, God is ever ready to give you what you want. Ask and you shall receive. 
You can't receive till you ask. Jesus says, seek, you shall find. If you don't seek, you cannot find. Even though God has given us everything that pertains life and godliness in this world, God still demands that we ask. And the reason is this. This is my, this is my, this is my thinking. The reason is that God wants to have fellowship with us. Everything you will need is inside of you. But why will God want you to ask? Because he wants to talk to you. He wants to hear your voice. He wants you to say hello to him. He wants to know what you are going through. He wants you to tell him yourself. So that Jesus is saying that God is ever willing. You know how we want, we are eager to ask God. We are eager to get an answer from God in prayer. And God is just, Jesus is saying, Look, listen, you are not as eager as God. God really wants to give it to you. But he's saying that in order for him to give it to you, you must ask. In order for him to give it to you, you must seek him. In order for, you to give, for him to give you, you must what? You must knock the door. He says, ask and you shall receive. Seek, you shall find. Knock and the door will be open. That is Jesus' statement. This is not Peter talking right now. This is not one of his disciples. This is Jesus himself. Look at what he says in verse number 9. Would any of you fathers give your son a stone when he asks for bread? No. Or will he give him a serpent when he asks for fish? No. And Jesus is saying, look, as bad as you guys are, as bad as we are, fathers, if our sons or our daughters ask us for bread, we will not give him a stone. I've never seen a good father that his children will ask him of a thing and will not give them. So Jesus is trying to compare us with the father. And he's saying that if the father, if, if the earthly father like, like we are, that can never die for our sons. I was telling them a story. I was telling them an analogy. I mean, look at me. I have five boys. As much as I love them super, super much. Not too sure if I'm going to die for one of them. That's what Jesus is trying to say. As much as you love your kids. Five. Die for one. Live for. A mass does not add. But God is ever willing to give his only begotten son for you. So Jesus is saying that as bad as you are, and you can give good gift, how much more the Father in heaven? That God is eager. God is eager to give you good gifts. God wants to answer your prayer. So some people are saying, well, I don't know if God is going to... You know, God is waiting. He wants to answer your prayer. He's just saying, can you ask me? Can you pray? It's not about what you need. It's about I want a relationship with you. I want a fellowship with you. Because every time we pray, we're fellowshipping with the Father. We're intermingling in the spirit realm with the Father. Anytime we pray. And God says, that is what I love. I want to talk to you. I want you to tell me how, how things are with you. Even though I know, but I want you to say it to me. And so prayer is super key. I told him in the first service, the most important thing in building relationship with God is prayer. Anyone that cannot pray cannot develop a deep relationship with God. You don't build a relationship with God by reading the Bible only. Your relationship with God grows, grows deeper when you pray. I've never seen anyone that have a good relationship with the Holy Spirit with Jesus, with the Father, outside of prayer. Because it is prayer that brings you close to God. That is the vehicle that God gave to us. That is the gift he gives to us so that we can reach out to him in prayer. Amen. And thank God we are a church that prays. We love prayer in this place. And you guys can pray. And you guys have prayed. But I want you guys to take your prayer life to the next level. To become relational. Not just asking God because you are in need. But you are asking God because he's your father. That's the reason why I pray. I come because he's my father. I'm not a bastard. I have a father in heaven. And so when I pray, I say, our father. Jesus even taught us, our father who is in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Because prayer is all about God and nothing about us. 
You know, when prayer becomes difficult, it's when we begin to see prayer as we. And that is when frustration kicks in the life of believers. I've seen a lot of frustrated Christians in this world, in my little time I've spent in the church. A lot of frustrated Christians. And if you ask them why they are frustrated, everything ends on, I asked God and God did not show up. If, you, if, they, if they are bold enough to say that to you, that they were expecting something for God to do and nothing, and God did not come through. Not because God did not, for them God did not come through, but they, began, they failed to see God for who God is. Or they failed to understand what prayer is all about. We have so much Christians today that are really, really, really going through a lot. And that's why sometimes when you call for prayer, not too many people show up. In fact, those people that show up for prayer don't even believe God is going to answer them. They just come because Pastor George said we should come and pray. They just come. But you shouldn't see prayer that way. Every time prayer is called, see it as an opportunity for you to commune with your Heavenly Father. See it as an opportunity. Because that's the purpose of prayer. Prayer is fellowship with the Father. Prayer is communing with the Father. And there's no way you can express your love for the Father without communicating with the Father. I've never seen any love that grows strong, grows deep without communication. And how dare we say that we can live a Christian life without prayer? How dare we go day by day without spending time to seek God in prayer? How dare we go day by day without asking God in prayer? So Jesus says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Now, I see two principles from this very few verse we just read. The first thing is that God is generous. The second thing is the, the man's intensity in prayer. That's why I stopped in the first service. So I'm picking it up from there. Get the tape, please. Media, please make sure the tape is available for them. Listen to the tape. It will help your prayer life. It will help your prayer life. We're talking about prayer. If you can understand this, your prayer life will be very simple. Your Christian life will be very dynamic. Because our Christian life is hinged on our prayer life. Tell me how deep your prayer life is. I will tell you how deep your relationship with God will be. It's all about prayer. It's all about fellowship with the Father. It's all about fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You want to build your faith? Fellowship with the Father. You want to build your faith? Fellowship with the Father. You want to build your understanding of the Word of God? Fellowship with the Father in prayer. So prayer is the key. In fact, prayer is the master key. That's why Jesus himself started his, his ministry with prayers and he ends his ministry with prayer. I have never seen a church that is very successful outside of prayer. I'm talking about praying and praying the very mind of God. And that's why we're teaching us here in this church. And that's why we engage in prayer. Every time we pray, we are saying, God, we are, have no ability in ourselves. We depend on you. That's what we're saying. Every time we refuse to pray, we say, God, we can take care of ourselves. We don't need you. But every time we pray, we are saying, God, look at us. We are human. But you are divinity. Please come help us. Come rescue us. God wants, us to, be at God wants to be attached with us. God does not want us to live our life independently. He wants us to rely on him. That's why he's saying, ask, ask, ask of me. Seek me. Knock the door. I will do it. I am the one that will do it. You cannot do it. You cannot, you cannot live your life outside of God. If you're going to live life and fulfill purpose, you need God. The orchestrator of your life, the one that designed your life to be in your life. And the only way God comes into your life is through prayer. It's not coming to church. It's not reading the Bible. It's as good as that is. The best way you can bring God in is to invite him in prayer. Where you have dialogue with him. And let the prayer not be a monologue. Let it be a dialogue where you speak to the Father and you hear the Father speak back to you in your spirit. It helps, oh God, and it helps again to sharpen your your spiritual antenna. Prayer helps to sharpen your spiritual antenna so that you can get the frequency of God. I know some of us are young in faith and we're saying, Pastor George, I don't understand all these things. I don't know how to pray. If I get on my knees, I want to pray. I can't. I don't, I'm short of words. 
I mean, if you feel that way. Sometimes you just feel, I don't know what I'm going to say to him. But guess what? His daddy say anything to him. Guess what? In most cases, it's not what you say. He reads your heart. He has the capacity to know exactly what you are feeling. It's God. But he just wants you to say something. He wants you to say something to him. He wants you to set some time aside every day to say, God, I want to talk to you. He feels super proud. You know how parents will feel very proud when their son calls them or their daughter calls them? And after they drop, hang up the phone, you say, you know what? I just got a call from my son. You feel, that's how God wants to feel proud of you. So after you've dropped the phone in prayer, God will call one of the angels. Guess who called me? His sister Jane just called me now. You know, and she says she needs this. Can you guys go and take care of that? God wants to hear you. And that's why Jesus says, ask, ask, ask. God is very willing. God wants to do it. But he wants you to ask. Amen. So we saw, so we saw the generosity of God. He wants to give. God is a giver. Amen. God is a giver. God responds to our request willingly. He wants to respond to us very quick and very willing. Luke chapter 12, verse number 32. It says, it says don't be afraid, little flocks, for it is your, for it is, for it gives your father great pleasure to give you the kingdom. He says, don't be afraid. God is very happy to give you the kingdom. That's the generosity of our God. And in, uh, in, in Psalm, verse, Psalm 2 verse 8, he says, only ask and I will give you the nations as an inheritance and the old earth for your possession. That's how generous this God is. God is super generous. He just wants you to ask. Ask in prayer. The question is, how much time do you spend in prayer? Do you even pray? Do you think prayer is important in your life? Look at all the scriptures we've been reading. It is God asking, telling us, ask me, ask me, ask me. Anytime you see that word ask, God is saying, pray, 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 pray to me. Communicate with me. Talk to me. That's what he's saying. I want to do something for you, but you need to ask me. Because I cannot do it except with your permission. Ask me and I will give you the nations. I will give you anything you want. A good father. Jesus says, how much more your heavenly father that is willing and waiting to give you what you ask in prayer. If only we can ask him, he will do it for us. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse number 3. He says, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you wonderful and marvelous things that you know nothing about. I love that scripture. It says, call, pray to me, ask me. Ask me, I would tell you wonderful things, marvelous things. So it is God's desire, it's his generosity to want us to pray so that he can give us something. But when we don't pray, we deny God his generous act. We deny God of his generosity. When you don't pray, when you don't ask God, you are just denying him of being a generous God in your life. Because he wants to give you. But he's not going to do anything except for you ask. God does not get crash into any man's life. That's what we talked about. When we talked about prayer, we said prayer is bringing divinity into humanity. That's what prayer is. You're inviting divinity to humanity. That's when we pray, we're bringing God into our life. And even God himself would say in Ezekiel chapter 30, 22 verse 30, he says, I sought for a man among them. I'm seeking for someone to stand in the gap. So God cannot come to earth except we invite him to planet earth. So God needs us. He, need, he can't come to your family except you invite him. And the only way you can invite him is through prayer. There's no other way you can invite God in. It's through prayer. Because prayer is an act of worship. Can I hear a loud amen? amen? Can I hear a born again one? Amen. So we talked about number two. We saw man's, man's intensity. 
man's intensity, the levels of prayer Jesus was talking about. For our prayers to be effective, our intensity must match the generosity of God. For our prayer to be very effective, our intensity must match the generosity of God. What do I mean by that? The way we want it must match the willingness and the eagerness of God to want to give it to us. Every character we've read in the Bible, you begin, and that God did marvelous things in their life, you will see that their prayer or the, the intensity of their prayer matches the generosity of God. For example, let me give you a typical example. I'm going to give you two examples or three. Look at Anna. Anna, is, Anna has been buried for years. I'm sure she's been praying. She's been asking God because she's been going to Shiloh. But this time around, Anna refused. It took her prayer. It intens she intensified her prayers. The Bible records about her prayer. It says, Anna prayed out of a bitter heart. She poured her bitterness to God. She groaned to God that even the pastor, the priest, thought she was drunken. That is the intensity of her prayer. She was mistakenly for a drunkard. That matches God's generosity. And when God will respond to that prayer, God gave her Samuel, guess what? A judge and also a prophet, the first in Israel. Look at Elijah. Look at the tenacity. Elijah says there's not going to be rain for three and a half years. Elijah did not go home. Elijah went on top of the mountain. So, engage God in prayer and God held out the rain for three and a half years at the word of Elijah. And after three and a half years, Elijah came back again and says, according to my word, there's going to be rain. And God showed up with rain. His intensity matches God's generosity. How much do you need what you are looking for? You must match up with God's generosity. God's willingness to bless must match your ability to pray. The Bible says, right from the day of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violence taken by force. How much do you need that breakthrough? Can only be qualified by how much you want to go on your knees to seek God. How much you want to hold the altar and say, God, you must change my destiny. Look at Jabez, another example. Jesus, Jabez was born, he was an honorable man, but he was born in poverty. He was born in pain. And the Bible says the blessings of God make it rich and have no sorrow. In Jabez's life, we know there's sorrow because the mother bore him in pain and his name is pain. But he needed to change his destiny. He needed to change his lot. He engages God's generosity by his intense prayer. And the Bible says, God enlarged his course. Look at blind Bartimaeus. He called him blind. In fact, his first name is blind. Then Bartimaeus. We don't know what is his first name or his last name, but we know there's blind there. They have tagged him. Tagged. A man that is carried on a daily basis. Handicap. I'm not talking about the handicap we're dealing with right now. This is total handicap. He lived on the mercy of people. If nobody carries him, he's not going to, he's not going to eat. That's blind by Timos. Everything he does is not He has to depend on someone. I'm sure they would have ridiculed him. Not once, not twice. Are we, are we the one that costs your blindness? Come on, please. If I have time, I'll take care of you. They must have really called this lie. And this guy was saying, only if I have my chance. Only if I have my chance. I'm sure you must have been praying. But this time around, something changed. The Bible says when Jesus was passing by, oh, this guy is desperate. He says, who is coming? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. 
What about this prophet? They say he has healed the blind. He does wonderful things. He says, are you sure? He says, yes. Blind Bacillus properly positioned himself in prayer. The Bible says he cried out. Prayer is an heart cry. You don't pray this level of prayer without crying out. Cried out, Jesus. Can you imagine a blind man? His voice silenced the thousands of people or around Jesus. One man's voice could stop the Messiah, the King of Kings. His intensity in prayer matches the generosity of Jesus. The people pray, just pray Burger King prayer and want things to move. No. There's nothing heaven cannot do. But heaven is waiting for your response to prayer. There's nothing God cannot move. There is no mountain difficult enough for God to not to move. That's nothing. Only waiting for you to go on your knees and hold on to him. Jacob says, God... He told the angels, I'm not letting you go till you bless me. The intensity of his prayer met the generosity of God. Your prayer. Subject to your, how intense. That's why Jesus teaching us prayer. So thereby saying you must ask. Level one of prayer is asking. What does it mean to ask? Ask God. Give me this. Give me that. Level two of prayer is seeking. Level three of prayer is what? Knocking. It takes progression. That is a progression of prayer. You start by asking. You engage to the next level by seeking. Because when you begin to seek, (laughs) it takes the totality of you to seek. I have never seen anyone seeking when his mind is not there. You can't be looking for a key and want to find the key and your mind is somewhere else and you're looking for a key. You will not see it. Am I communicating here? That's something in prayer. He said, when you have seek me with all your heart, then you shall find me. There are people, God is hid from some people. God is not cheap. You don't find him everywhere. You seek him to find him. There is the general God. The God of the miraculous. You have to seek him. You have to engage your heart. You have to be determined. I am going to pray upon. I'm going to pray a meeting. You have to be determined. It's a sacrifice. You have to be determined. I have never seen anyone that had a turnaround in the Bible without intensive, intentional prayer life. Never. I have seen people's life overturned by prayer. I'm giving you some example. I can go over and go on. Why? They seek God. In this kingdom, it is prayer that gets, gets delivered, done to, delivered to you. Prayer. If you don't pray, you live an ordinary life. If you pray, you live a supernatural life. Don't pray. You live an ordinary life. You live in labor. When you pray, you live in favor. Why? You are in control. You are in communication with the Almighty. (laughs) Prayer is important. One of the things I've come to see, one of the strategy of the enemy, most especially for those of us that are in this part of this world, is to tell us that fine, everything is working, just don't worry, you'll get a check in the mail, don't worry, you'll get by, because you can, we can swipe our card and do anything. So the supernatural, we just put the supernatural in the back shelf, and we are living at the mercy of the creditors. Whereas we can reach out to the almighty God. 
the monarch of the universe. The one that does extraordinary things with nothing. Remind me of a story of a guy. I think this, this, story, this, this is a true life story. This is a praying family. This is true life story. It happens here in this country when prayer was prayer in this country. This family, they were really, really starving. They had nothing to eat. And the father just set the table. Set the table. Then the table set. The children sit down. Plates all over the place, but empty. Some of you must have read the same book I read. And it says, let's pray. The son says, daddy, nothing there. He said, don't worry. The man upstairs, the God upstairs, will answer us. Before they are done, somebody came and knocked the door. Ah. And delivered chicken, everything, give them, and walk away. He never saw that person anymore. Another same story. They were in need of milk. No milk, have infants. This man prayed. Guess what? The next morning, the truck that is carrying milk to where that stop and shop collided in that their front house. And there was milk all over the place. When you pray, God will move a nation for your sake. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? What is difficult? The only hard thing is for God to get you to pray. That is the only hard thing for God. Not to bless you. To bless you is easy. But to get you to pray and ask him. Because he will not violate his own law. He says, if you don't ask, I'm not going to do anything. To get you to pray. That's what God is. That's God's frustration. The enemy gives us small little work. Keep us busy. Prayer, we can't even find time to pray. Some church folks have taught when they come to prayer meeting, they are doing for a favor. No. Everybody running their race. I'm clearing my way. Prayer is what you use to clear your ways. I pray a lot. I love praying. If I start, I can't stop. I can keep you guys here for 12 hours. Pray. I love it. It's the thing that sustained me and what is sustaining me till today. That's why we are different from other churches. Prayer is the key. They don't do it. We do it. We are saying, God, you are the one we are looking up to. They are saying, well, we can figure it out themselves. And see the difference. There must be intensity in your prayer. First level is asking, give me bread, give me bread, give me this. The second prayer is seeking God for who God is. You know how you draw your children? <laughs> I love Jesus. I love God too much. You know how you draw your children with candy? Are you not a parent here? You see a child of yours that is literally going, going far away from you. What do you do? You just buy something for them and say, hey, by the way, I just bought you a, a pair of sneakers. What are you trying to do? You're trying to draw them close. So this is how God starts his prayer dimension. Ask. So when you ask, he gives you. Then the next level, he says, okay, now I've given you this. You know I'm real. I want to bless you. I want you to take it to the next level where you begin to really, really, really enjoy me. And that's the level of seeking God. So you're coming to God and says, God, I really don't need anything. I just want to say hello to you, Father. I really don't need anything. I just, you have all needs. He knows your needs. But you're just saying, God, I'm just coming because I just love you so much. That is the second aspect of God. That's another dimension of prayer. The church, the church I've taught, we, those of us here today, we have, we've been taught to stay in that first dimension, which is the accent. So people come to prayer meeting because they have a need that God must take care of. That's the accent. That's okay. But that's the junior level. The middle school level is to seek him. I'm not in need of anything. Several times, most of the time, standing in this altar, I'll let you know. I always say to God, don't bless me, just bless these people. I 
prayer is which I most of my prayer. Don't give me anything. Just bless them. Uh, you know what I'm doing? I'm provoking God to shower me with uncommon blessing. I'm not to provoke God. I'm not to provoke him. I, I've never come and said, God, give me. No, don't bless me. Just bless these church folks. Bless them. Give them miracle. Give them breakthrough. And in, in return, God begins to shower me with uncommon blessing. Uncommon. I'm a blessed man. I'm telling you the truth. Because my blessing comes from places I least expect on a weekly basis. On a weekly. A call will come. Man of God, send your bank account. Okay, I'll do it. A call will come. Someone is just going, shake me. Money, put it in my pocket. That's how I believe it. What I get as blessing is more than what you guys pay me. I'm not trying to I appreciate the payment. <laughs> but I'm just telling you how why I have chosen to hold God and make him my refuge. Chosen. Chosen to commune with him in prayer. And that's the reason why nothing moves me. She, my wife is there. She'll tell you I'm not moved by anything. Because I know the one that got my back will come through for me. Nothing. I don't care how bad the news is. It, you will never hear me panic. Best you hear from me is well. That they will take care of you. Why? I know whose I am. I just came from his chamber a few hours ago. And what he told me is different from what I'm seeing. So I'd rather believe him than believe what I'm seeing. Can I hear loud amen? amen. But if you, don't have spent, if you don't spend time with him in his chamber, you will not know what his heart is for you. So prayer helps you to know the mind of God for you. God disclose his mind for you through prayer. Let me finish this. You getting something out of this? We must be a church that prays. Must be a church that prays. We must be a Christian that prays. Amen. 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 So we saw the progression of the intensity in prayer. Every prayer must take this progression to be effective. Every Christian life, every prayer life must take this progressive. Start with asking, progress to what? To seeking, then progress to what? Knocking. That is the progression in prayer. And every dynamic prayer life or every prayer that will be effective must take this progression. If you are just stuck in asking, you will not be able to experience the seeking part of prayer. And that is one of the most enjoyable parts of prayer. The most enjoyable part of prayer is the seeking because in that place, you just seek his presence. Remember I told you guys the story, and I've told you several times about these three fishes. That's where I'm talking about. This, that's the seeking. There's this, in this ocean, there is three, three wonderful fishes. And there is a shark and a baby shark in that same ocean. And the baby shark will always terrorize this fish. Every day, they live in fear. And so the, fish, uh, the three fishes actually had a prayer meeting. I don't know how they call the prayer meeting. But I just, somebody told the story, I'm telling you the story. I, I'm not the originator. And they prayed, and the first, shot, the first fish says, then God was saying, ask me what you want. You know, God is generous, I'll give it to you. The first one now says, you know what, God, please, please, please give me what a, a wing. No, give me eyes all over my body, eyes. Eyes in my back, eyes in my leg, so that if the shark is far off, I see the shark and I will just swim out of the ocean. That's what you want? Yeah. And the generous God gave it to that fish. The second fish came and said, God, I don't really want the eyes all over me. I just want to fly. So if the shark comes, I just fly away. I fly away, oh glory. I fly away. That's what you want? He said, Yes. Give him wings. No, God is generous. The third fish says, God, I just want your presence. 
That's what you want? Nothing? Your president? Just all? Yes. Anywhere I go, go with me. You know, after prayer, there will be the test for that prayer. After you have prayed, everything you have prayed, the devil will test you, whether you really believe in it. So Satan came through the shark. The first one that has eyes. While the shark was far away, mm, just saw the lab. <laughs> I see you. And swam to outside the ocean. There's a small pool of water. And remained there. I was laughing and making mockery of the shark. Okay, come get me now. Come get me now. The shark swam back into the river, into the ocean. And as he's going back to the ocean, he saw the one with wings. Ah, this one is there. That, you know, the one with wings just say, well, I'm not going to really run. As soon as you are very close, <laughs> and, and, and the shark was getting close. I said, wow, he's not even doing anything. And before they know it, boom, she's just, just fishes out of the ocean. And lo and behold, an eagle is just flying by. And the eagle says, God, I wanted to eat fish, but I could not swim, but you brought fish to me in the air. And that, that fish became a dinner for the eagle. Then he says, okay, you know what? There's one more. And that guy was that calm. Calm. And the shark, the baby shark says, Mommy, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at the other one. He says, are you crazy? Don't you see the shadow of someone that surrounds that little fish? That shadow will kill you or will kill us if we go close. Is the height, the seeking God. When you seek him in prayer, you position yourself in Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Shall abide under the shadow of the Most High. They are abiding, unshakable or movable, because they have a deep relationship, not in asking. They have a relationship with God in seeking. And that puts them in the dwelling place. Amen. Amen. James chapter 1. Oh, Jesus. So let me go to my notes and I'll close with this. The first level is asking, and this is to make, re make a request or send a petition. This is a continuous progress until the petition is made. Mark, Mark chapter six, 18, verse 1 to 5. So the first level is the level of petitions. When we begin to send petitions, for our needs. The second level is the, uh, the second level of intensity is, is seeking. And this is to strive to search God with all our heart. This level we seek for the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse number 10. But I, the Lord, search all the heart and examine the secret motive. I give people their due reward according to what their action deserve. So this one here seeks the Lord. And the third is knocking. This is to be persistent or to confront all barriers and resistance. You know, I told you guys that the middle one is just where you really have good enjoyment because you do nothing, you just stay there. The knocking aspect of it is that you are beginning to knock. You don't, you do something, you exercise, you are attacking barriers. So when we talk about knocking, we're talking about prevailing kind of prayer. We're talking about warfare kind of prayer. Intensity, so the intensity grows. It starts with asking, petition, it goes to seeking. Worship. It goes to what? To the knocking, where we begin to do warfare, breaking down barriers, breaking down barricades in prayer. Say, no way, I'm going to get this. You cannot, Satan, you can't stop me. There's no power in heaven or on earth. There's no power anywhere that can stop me from my destination. You begin to intense by knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking every door down. Can I hear loud amen? 
we must learn to pray. And we must pray in this progression. Because this is the recipe that Jesus himself gave to us. That we must live a prayerful life. My prayer for you is that you no longer depend on yourself. You begin to depend on him. Because there is nothing God cannot do. I am a testimony. And I see many testimonies here of what the hand of God can do for a people that seeks him. A people that prays and have fellowship with God in prayer. People that have come to this understanding that they don't have power in themselves to move their life. But, they have, but all power belongs to him and they are just relying on God to help them move. Amen. And that is where God wants us to be. And that's why we're having the 10 days prayer and fast. So that we can create a platform for you all to come and meet with your God. The purpose of these 10 days is not to kill you. The purpose of these 10 days is not to just have another activity. But it's a religious exercise for us to seek God. God knows that we're going through things. God does not, he knows what you're going through, but he does not read your mind. He reads your lips as you verbalize your word. And says, God, I have this need in my life. Please, can you come and help me? God wants us to ask him. If you don't ask him in prayer, there's nothing God can do. You, you handicap the power of God over your life when you don't pray. I told you many things that God has done for us by prayer. I told you how we have enjoyed divine protection by prayer. I can stand here and give you testimony and testimony of what prayer has done. Not because I stand and begin to kill, bind all of the devils. No, I have a dynamic prayer life. I don't wait for things to happen before I pray. No, I don't do that. In fact, when things are happening, I just relax. That is not when I pray. That's when I hear. Because it's going to give instruction. When things are calm, that's when I pray. When things are turbulent, that's when I relax. And say, God, what am I going to do? What do you want to do with this? There's a trouble right now before me. What, are you gonna, what do you want to do with this trouble? Because if I'm talking at that time, I will not hear what, this, what instruction is going to give to me. So let's not wait for things to be bad for us to start praying. Build your prayer bank so that you can draw from it. Have a prayer life. Don't wait till we call 10 days or 21 days or 7 days or 3 days before you pray. Have a prayer life. Set time as, aside on a daily basis and say, God, I want to talk to you. If you don't know what to pray, just worship him. If you don't know what to pray, speak in tongue if you can speak in tongue. If you can't do it alone, have a brother or a sister in this place and say, please, can I be praying with you? Just spend time. Develop your prayer, your prayer life. Develop your, because it's key for your relationship with God. You can't have a dynamic relationship with God without a prayer life. You can't. You can't, you can't enjoy the supernatural without a prayer life. And God wants to speak to you. God wants to hear from you. He's eager for your phone call. He's eager for you to say something to him. He's saying that thing that you're going through, he knows. But he wants you to engage him. He wants you to bring him into that situation. He can do it. He will take care of it. There's nothing too difficult for God to take care of. Sarah was 90 years old when God gave, him, gave her Isaac. There's nothing too difficult for God to do. There's nothing impossible for this God to go. In fact, God specializes in the impossibility. Joseph was a slave in Egypt and God made him a prime minister overnight. He doesn't have to know anyone. He just has to know the maker and have a communion with the maker. There's nothing God cannot do if we can engage in prayer. God wants to hear from you. God wants you to speak to him. God wants you to make him number one. God wants you to make him number one. God wants you to depend on him. Because he is the one that will take care of you. God wants you. He wants to hear from you. Don't think you can do life by yourself. Life is too harsh. Life is too tough. Life is too difficult. That's why Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit. He says, I am going, but I'm going to give you another comforter. Because it's difficult in the world. You're going to find trouble. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. 
But you can only partake of this overcome, this overcoming power by you praying. That's why we're encouraging you to come. It's not too late to join the fast. We're on our tenth, our fifth day. Prayer don't fasting don't kill, but it only fortify you to go through rough time. It may not be today. Every prayer is a bank. The prayer, what I am enjoying right now is the prayer I prayed long before, long ago. Every time you pray, you are banking prayer. And when that time comes, God begins to release, withdraw, withdraw. I'm withdrawing those days prayer. So I'm praying now for the future. I'm banking prayer for my children and my grandchildren. I'm banking prayer for them. So I cannot say, okay, I've prayed enough. No, I'm banking prayer for them. That's what you do. A good father or a good mother leave an inheritance. One inheritance you can leave for your children is to bless their future. I am banking for them now. Majority of my prayer is to bank for them. Because for me, I've lived my life. It's their life. That God will secure them. That God will keep them. That they will not stumble when the roughness of life will hit them. That the God will lift them up like an eagle. They will mount up wing like an eagle. There will not be no wickedness with a sat over them. They will not be denied of their due right. That's a prayer. That's what I pray for them. I call their name. I'm banking. So when we call for prayer, it's not only for you. We're banking for the future. God wants you. He wants to hear from you. So don't miss it. This doesn't kill you. When we come, we do, worst case, no, we do two hours. It will not kill you. You have added to your life. You have fortified yourself. Amen. I love praying. Where I am right now is as a result of prayer. I know that. I know it. The grace we are enjoying is as a result of prayer, period. That's why everything I do, I fall back to the main thing and the main thing, main thing, prayer. So you hear me say 21 days. You hear you say 10 days. Yeah. Because that is what our sustainer, that is how we are sustained. God sustains us through prayer. So you can't see this church go a whole year without doing almost close to, in fact, we the pastors, you guys may not do it, we fast every Friday for you guys. The pastors, you see them. Every Thursday, that's why I said I appreciate them. They are fasting for you, praying for you guys. It's very important. See them. That's why you have to appreciate them. Ministers, you are joining us. I've told Pastor Thomas to include you guys going forward. Ministers and elders, you will get a notice. Friday, you don't eat food. You pray for the people. That God bless them. Prayer is key. Jesus started with prayer. I thought I was going to finish this. I made the note. I can end the note anytime and anywhere. <laughs> Amen. But this is my heart desire. That God wants to answer us. Wants to answer us. I've seen God do miracles. I remember one time we were in Benin. It used to be in Deeper Life those days. I was a prayer leader. And um, we were short of money. And we prayed. And we believed God. From nowhere money came. I've seen miracles. Strange things. Strange things happen when we pray. If we are not experiencing it right now, it's because we are not praying. I hear believers say, well, those days God used to move. No, God still moves, but he's looking for people to pray. God only responds. His movement is a response to prayer. 
please pray. It was prayer that dug my family from satanic holes. I mean, I'm talking about serious satanic holes. I told you guys the story. It was prayer that yanked the family from the jaw of Satan. I told you guys. Let any witch try any of my members of my family. The person will go. <laughs> he go, go. Deprive any member of my family. Deny them of their right. You see what God will do. I don't need to pray. I don't have to pray. Because I've already banked prayer. And Pastor Thomas is here. We'll go to retreat. Spend eight hours. We're still praying. In the forest. Not, not this, this uh, air condition I was talking about. Is there? Fasting, prayer. Bank it. So we're not playing games here. We have seen God in prayer. We don't talk the God we have not experienced. I've experienced the power of God. It shows that we, are, we don't talk what we, God has done through us. I don't like boasting on, on what happened last time. But if I tell you here, you'll be amazed. When my mom comes, ask my mom. Power of prayer. Raising the day. What are we talking about? Having a scorpion in your pocket and you're not harmed. How did he get there? I don't know. But prayer neutralizes the power of the scorpion. What are we talking about? There's nothing God cannot do. What are we talking about? This God, if only we can engage him in prayer, in fellowship, there's nothing he cannot change. There is nothing too difficult for God to change. It's the Alpha and Omega, the monarch of the universe. He told Moses, my name is I am that I am. I choose my name. I am that I am. He just wants us to engage him. When I tell you my story, you will know you can see the power of prayer. That's why I'm so passionate about this. Because I know what God can do when we pray. I know what God can do when we pray. And I know we are not praying and we're not seeing what God can do. And we are in pain. But we're not praying. The pain was supposed to drive us to our knees so that God will intervene. But the pain is driving us away from God. And so we end up trashing our dreams because we've taken God out of the equation. Have you come to realize this? That the least thing you think about when you are going through trouble is prayer. The first thing you think about, who are you going to call? Which human being are you going to call? In most cases, you call the one that will even make you. Am I complicating? The first one you call, I know, just the moment you drop the phone, you call someone, ah, oh, look at her. Look at her. But the one that is just waiting, he says, I know that problem was coming. I already made a way of escape in that problem. If only you can consult me, we will not go to him. May God deliver us. So I beg you, as a member of this church, our secret is prayer. We don't have any other secret. We don't have any other. We have no Godfather anywhere helping us. <laughs> you hear me? There's no Godfather anywhere helping this church. From day one, it was prayer, prayer, prayer. From day one, we have no Godfather. For 12 years now, we have no Godfather. And we don't intend to have any Godfather because we have Heavenly Father. The navigation of this church is done through prayer. We get information from God, and God begins to direct us. There are things we have done in this place that came from nowhere. But it was better than prayer. 
This church has been growing from strength to strength, from grace to grace. Storms come, but God shield us. Blesses us with all kind of blessing in this church. You're talking about the word of God? We have it. The pastorate. Hear them, please. Let this pastor speak. Or the ministers. You have named the giftings in this list. Prayer. Please, let's pray. Stand up on your feet. I pray the spirit that is on us will come on you. The spirit of prayer and intercession will come upon you all. So that the devil will not have any part in your life. As God has empowered us, God will empower you. As God has caused us to touch his glory, God will cause you to touch his glory. That amen is not born again. Lift up your voice. Say, God, empower my prayer life. I want to speak with you, God. Help me to know you. I want to know you. Lift up your voice. Start praying. Thank you for watching. For more information, please visit us at Fountain of Grace, 427 Turnpike Street, Canton, Massachusetts, 02021. Or give us a call at 781-821-1121. Or feel free to give us an email at admin at fountainofgracebos.org. Or visit us at our website at www.fogbos.org.